All right. We have done the basic trigonometric functions before. The very basic one will be something we have a trig value. We have a value and we go ahead. For the first step, we find pi over 3 coming from the sine inverse. And we discard the sine, so we always have an acute angle in quadrant 1. Once we have that, we draw four candidates. Because we know for every single value within one cycle, we probably have four candidates unless you are 1 or negative 1. And then we give them the sign, depending on the trig uh, function. And finally, we circle the ones that will give us this negative sign. Once we have that, we go ahead and write down our answers. For this case, we have two answers within one cycle. We have an OR. And then finally, we put in a 2 and pi. n can be any integer. Okay, That's roughly the whole process of doing this. Very standard. And for this case, we have a special angle, pi over 3, 1 half. But if we don't, we simply just keep the thing on the left and don't simplify unless we have a calculator. Now, if you push one step further, we can realize, OK, sometimes you can actually take your sine x and view it as another variable to combine quadratic functions with sine x or maybe some other func uh, equations you had before with trig values. And the thing is very simple. First, do a change of variable and solve the quadratic or whatever equations you have that do not involve the trig. Finish until this step. And then after that, go ahead and try to solve and then everything reduced to the basic trig equations. That's roughly the idea. Okay. Now, what we want to do is um, we want to push a little further and see how complicated, how many more complicated cases we can do. And we will just do some examples. The first one is something that involves multiple or actually, you know, not just multiple, any kind of angles. For example, solve 2 cosine 3 theta plus pi equals 1. How do you solve this? Well, that's your question. Number one, we don't know how to solve this, but we do know how to solve this. So you can see the only additional thing we added bef as bef uh, compared to before is our angle is not just a single variable. It's actually a complicated, relatively complicated expression which involves multiple angles and maybe some constants. Now, how do you solve this? Well, Number one, you do know how to solve this. That's exactly what we had from last time. Now, how do you solve that? Probably you start to see it's the same trick as what we did before. We do a change of variables, so we worry about this one later. Let alpha, which is a different angle, equals this. Let's solve this one first. Okay. Ha! Huh. We just did this. Cosine inverse 1 half equals pi over 3. Oh, did a bad thing. This is pi. <laughs> this is going to be pi over 6. So let me change a little bit. This is. That's why I feel weird. Okay, that's right. No, uh, this is pi over 3. Take down this, take down this, take down this. Now you know cosines this. Therefore, we want positive. We want these two. Alpha equals pi over 3 plus 2 and pi. Alpha equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 and pi. Okay. N equals any. Uh, N is any number. That is integer. Okay, and it's integer, but have you done? Not really, you solved for alpha, but remember now you can say alpha is actually 3 theta plus pi, but you just solved alpha, which is pi over 3 plus 2 and pi. Now the question becomes, how do you solve for theta? And from here you can see there's no more trick because you already have solved the trick part. You just need to do an additional job here 
by solving the algebra. That is going to be pi over 3 plus 2 and pi minus pi. Simplify a little bit. These two merge into minus 2 pi over 3. Now you divide everything by 3. You have 2 n pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3 divided by another 3. So you change this to a 9. All right. That's the step one. Now, remember, we have another choice for alpha. So let's just repeat what we had here for the other one. 2 n pi 3 theta equals this minus pi plus 2 n pi. And you see this give you 2 pi over 3. Therefore, theta equals 2 pi over 9 plus 2 n pi over 3. Okay. That will be the answer, actually. And is any integer uh, integer so what do you say when you have some complicated angles other than ju just the single variable like this what you do is you just assign whatever the angle is to be a single variable and solve for the single variable using trig functions after that what do you do you do additional steps by recovering the original expressions from the single uh, angle, but the good news is the sine and the cosine is already gone because you have already solved the trig equation. So that's the principle. With that in mind, let's try another example really quickly. Okay, and this time let's do tangent 2 theta plus pi over 2 equals negative 1, but this time we do it on 0 to 2 pi. So I do have an interval. Remember, when we have an interval involved, what we do is we pretend we didn't see it and solve it. Okay? This will only give us some additional steps. So first, 2 theta plus pi over 2 is the angle we are looking for. And of course, um, how do I say this? We, we just take this one to be an angle. Then alpha is involved with tangent inverse negative 1, which you know, sorry, not 1, the negative 1, 1, which is pi over 4. So don't write this. We first focus on the reference angle. We have pi over 4, therefore we have this and that. Positive, negative, positive, negative, negative. From here, what do you have? Uh, you need negative 1, so that's going to be the 1 in quotient. Okay. You do have two answers, but you do have a clever way to write it down. That is going to be 3 pi over 4 plus not 2 n pi, but n pi. Okay. That is your alpha, and that should equal 2 theta plus pi over 2. Okay. After that, you just need to simplify and solve for theta. 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 2 plus n pi. This gives you pi over 4. Then this gives you pi over 8 plus n pi over 2. That will be your final answer, where n can be any number. That is the integer. Okay. So now, how do you handle this 0 to 2 pi? Same trick. You take down this, and you start to plug in numbers n equals 0, that's going to be pi over 8, plus pi over 2, uh, plus 0, check, n equals 1, pi over 8, plus pi over 2, which is 5 pi over 8, between 0 and 2 pi, yes, n equals 2, pi over 8, plus pi over 2 times 2, 9 pi over 8, check, keep going, Remember, for 2 pi, you are looking for 16 over 8. And it's pretty sure that this one isn't going to be too big. This part alone is 2 pi, plus another positive thing is bigger than 2 pi. Therefore, this is not qualified. n equals negative 1. Pi over 8 minus pi over 2 less than 0. Stop. So the final answer will be these four answers. 
So you can see this part is totally diff uh, the same as before. OK. All right. That's the first type. You have a complicated angles. And from here, you can see it's nothing difficult. But if you but uh, as long as you replace the complicated angle by a single angle and solve it first. The second one becomes more complicated. That is, you can have anything that involving a trig identity. Before, you never use the trig identities, but the basic properties. But now, because you are dealing with trig, tricks certainly have certain kind of relationships between them. Let's see several examples. The first one. Can you solve it? The answer is no. Why? Because not only I have sine, I also have cosine. So if I really want to do a change of variable, I can call this one alpha, but then I cannot call this one alpha. I can call it beta. Then what I have is in, within a single equation, I have two variables. It's not doable. Okay, that's the trouble. Well, how do you solve it? Quite simple. How do you solve it? Well, um, what you don't like, you don't like two different tricks. You don't like in the same equation, you have sine and cosine at the same time. Then can you change them? Can you change the sine to be cosine? So the sine is gone, leaving you only cosine. Or can you change cosine to be sine? So the cosine is gone, leaving you only sine. That's where the trig identity comes in. The trig identity likes square. Therefore, I think a smarter way to do this is to change cosine to be sine. You can also do sine with cosine, but you need to involve square root. And whenever you have a square root, you have a positive or negative case, which is complicated. So probably this case, we prefer that. The rest are all the tricks. So I would do it really quickly with the complete steps, but I won't talk too much. Hold on. What do I have? Yes, I do have it. No, do I? Minus one. Okay, that's why. Mm, this is minus one. Therefore, you have sine x equals negative one half, or sine x equals what? From here, you can see x equals pi over 2 plus 2 and pi, or x equals, I will skip the steps. You verify by yourself, draw the unit circle. Okay, it's pi over 6 related, it's negative, so quadrant 3 and 4. For sine. Okay, so the final answer will be all the three possibilities and can be any integer. All right, that's how we do it. From here, you can see you have to apply a trick identities you have, otherwise, this one is not doable. What other trick identities, identities you know? A whole lot. The reciprocal, the Pythagorean, the negative ones, which means the uh, the, uh, the odd even function identity, and finally the uh, the co-functions with the pi over two minus x. Then we did addition, subtraction. We did product to sum, sum to product, and double half angle formulas. So there is a lot you can do. Like I said. Make sure you memorize all of them. That's how you can reflect to them whenever you see a new example. Second, solve this. Well, what do you have? Double angle formula, right? That's great. But then you ask yourself a question. What formula do you know about double angle formula? You technically have three. That's formula one. That's formula two. And that's formula three. And do you remember what's the principle? 
you don't want to create additional variables for the equation. So if you already have a sine here, you probably don't want this. And if you have a cosine here, you will have sine to cosine, you probably don't want this either. You would prefer that there's only one sine there. So this will be the case for this one due to we already have a sign. We don't want to create additional trig values. After that, mm, okay, the old trick. This one is actually almost identical to the one before. All right, so I will just write down sine theta equals one half or sine theta equals negative one. This one gives you three over two pi plus two and pi. Or this one gives you, how do I say? Um, let's draw it here. Pi over six. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Therefore, pi over 6 plus 2 and pi, or 5 pi over 6 plus 2 and pi. That will be all the answers. After you add n, can be any integer. If I give you interval, go ahead and plug in n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. From here, you can see there's nothing. Uh, difficult except take what we had from last time and now you need to worry about one more thing that is you know a lot of trig identities so even from the beginning you see this is impossible okay try to think about what you want and try to use the trig identities to create the situation you want in the first case you don't want sine and cosine together you want only one type of sine or cosine that's where you probably have the hint that i can change one of them to the other for the second case, of course, double angle formulas, otherwise you cannot even start. Now, the help of this sine term here actually help you to choose from the three possible formulas for cosine 2 theta. You find sine theta is, pro you probably want the one with the sine theta. Okay, I think that's it. There is no uniform way to tell you, okay, if you see this, do that, if you see this, do that. You probably need to give it a, a one or two or even three tries with all the possible identities you have and try to see which one actually give you a better situation than the original. Sometimes it takes a long time. So to show that, I will show you one last example. Okay, that is this. From here you can see there is no uniform way of doing this. Okay, number one, what can you do? Well, you can simply change one of them to be 1 minus cosine square. That's one possibility. But remember, when you do that, you do have two possibilities. So this one is going to be long. Okay, that's the first approach. Second approach, I really don't like this. And the reason I don't like this is because to use trig identities between sine and cosine, I want them to be squared. Then one possible way to do is, may not be working, by the way, but you can try. That is square this and square this. Okay. What will happen? Well, what will happen is you will have the thing you want, which is fantastic. Meanwhile, you have something that you don't want, which is too bad. Okay. But the good news, the good news is this is one, this is one. So finally, you just have this. So what can you do? You have two possibilities. The first one is this one means sine x equal to zero or cosine x equals zero. Sine x equals, equals zero, you have the answer to be this and that. Cosine x equal to zero, the answer has to be this and that. So the final answer is going to be zero plus pi over two times a n for my x dot n can be any integer. So the first way to do it, square both sides. After that, you got two things multiply equal to zero, even though you have two different tricks. The good news is you can do them separately. 
or if you quickly realize this is nothing but sine 2x because this is a former right so if that's the case we just solve this and that means what that means 2x equals the square sine is 0 that is going to be 0 plus n pi this implies x equals n pi over 2 which is exactly what we have and can be any integer so you also have the same answer same thing okay so if you square it you have some surprise of course this may take you some time to to realize the third thing what else do you know once you see something like this does it look familiar then we realize this is sine x plus cosine x I can actually do this the other way and do you remember why you want to do this the reason is because you want to have a cosine pi over 4 and the sine pi over 4. This is actually how we did the merging of two waves. I divide the square root of 2 to the other side. Okay. This is sine x plus pi over 4 equals 1 over square root of 2. That it gives you x plus pi over 4 equals, well, what do you have? This gives you pi over 4. And sine is positive. This gives you x plus pi over 4 equals pi over 4 plus 2n pi. Or x plus pi over 4 equals pi over 3. Uh, 3 pi over 4 plus 2n pi. Simplify a little bit. This becomes x equals 2n pi or x equals pi over 2 plus 2 and pi. What are they? They are this and that. They are this and that. Okay, so from here you can see, um, hold on, yes. From here you can see, um, That's what I'm missing. N can be any integer. From here you can see there's really no uniform way of solving all this. We have all kinds of um, possibilities you can think about. Right? That's why I want to give you this example, but really I probably cannot provide you with... Actually, there's no way to tell you firmly you see this situation, you do this. So you need to be a little bit creative and try with what you have. The good news is uh, you, you do have a lot of tools. So again, I want to re-emphasize, to use the tools, you have to be familiar with the tools first. So make sure you memorize the formulas because you use them so frequently and you want to create with them. It's the same as if you say, why don't I just use a formula sheet? I will ask you, why do you learn English? Why don't you just carry a dictionary with you all the time? Okay, that will be all four trick uh, equations. Have fun with all the exercises.